So, you want to be a Dragon Slayer. A very brave and foolish endeavor, especially if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons Tower of Doom. That's where Flamewing the Frightening resides. A fine, outstanding example of a species that guards 480,000 points. Not a very valuable treasure to most, but to geeky hardcore gamers like myself, it's worth having for dumb bragging rights. The allure of Flamewing's screen-stealing, proportionately pumped body has stolen countless quarters from clueless kids and experienced players alike. He is a magnificent sight to behold, with spines and jagged edges on every limb, all large enough to fit the heads of his victims. And even if you decided to use the power of pay to win, he'd still laugh at you from the grave, as using a continue or two will deny you the fattest possible bonus. He's not impossible, though. After all, if a boss was truly impossible, it wouldn't be in a very good video game. Capcom games are usually never like that. So I set off on a quest to conquer Flamewing and show off my mad gamer skills to my viewers. I succeeded after two days and 50 hours of recording. And aside from my ego being inflated, there wasn't even a gift shop waiting for me at the exit. So I put together this guide. To prove that these games are fairer than they look when they're designed well, and just in case anyone else is foolhardy enough to try this at home. Before we begin, two facts to keep in mind. This guide is going to assume you know how to do all the special moves and actions you'll need to use occasionally. Older arcade games typically didn't teach you how to do everything for the sake of making the special moves feel special. If you're unfamiliar with the commands, there are plenty of move lists available online to assist you. And if you guys want to see me make a visual move list, I could do that in a future video. Number two, which is especially important if you're going for a one credit clear and the secret ending, your spells are not restored at the pit stop before the dragon. Only your health is recovered. This is a translation error. I would sincerely advise against using any healing magic on the Manticore rematch if you're going for said secret ending. The few forewarnings posted, the hunt for Flamewing can now begin. When you get control of your character, immediately run to one of the corners of the cave and park there before you become crispy, overdone dragon barbecue. Flamewing will always begin the fight by using his Fiery Breath, an iconic force of fury that kills you instantly. He will turn up the heat two more times at set durations. Once when he's at half health, and again when he's at death's door. And you can tell when he's about to erupt because he'll spout text both times. It's possible to get a few extra hits on one of his hands while you're running towards the corner, but once you get to safety, the hands will likely be out of reach until the dragon's finished burping. Once the flames fizzle out, the real fight begins. You will want to position yourself underneath the dragon's gaping maw as much as possible, since you're the insect tickling the giant's skin. I bet you can figure out what would happen if you were within arm's reach. If you're improperly positioned, Flame Wing will give you a hand in flattening you into a pancake which would make you very easy to chew up. While you can slip through the fingertips with a perfectly timed jump, I would not recommend even thinking about it because your entire body is enough to be the dragon's big stress toy. Just get under the mouth and you'll avoid this headache entirely. With a strategic position taken and the fire hazard acknowledged, you've seized as much control over the fight as you can. Every trick the dragon has from this point forward comes out randomly. I want to make it crystal clear that you will get walloped and tossed around like the whelp you are until you've got all these attacks drilled into memory and recognize their warning signs with eagle eyes. Even when you've studied this magnificent creature's defenses thoroughly, you might stumble hitting the right button combinations in a hurry since you're only given half a second to react to most of these patterns. Your difficulty level affects the beast's aggressiveness, 
but it does not make its attacks any easier to avoid. Practice and persistence will be your greatest allies, along with your friends if you're playing with them. So without further ado, here's all the ways Flamemen will try to torment you, and what to do about them. Claw Swipe. Simple, but effectual. Flame Wing will pull one of his arms backwards to try and slap you across the head. I bet you've never been hit by a scaly hand that's as hard as a rock before. You'll want to duck out of this one before you're shoved to the land of hard knocks. Ground Pound. If the dragon rises to the ceiling of its lair while emitting a low, scathing growl, it's about to pound its hands down with all its might making the earth quake in fear. Even if you avoid becoming a pancake, the ground giving up underneath you can trip you up and leave you vulnerable. So you'll want to jump, man. Timing is everything. When Flame Wing comes crashing down, jump when his toenails can't be seen anymore. You're given some leeway on the timing, but the later you are, the easier it is for Flame Wing to smack you out of the air. Rock Drop. You know the old saying, sticks and stones may break your bones? Well, they certainly can if they're really big rocks. The dragon's too hot for his home to handle. He'll cause chunks of the ceiling to fall down on you when he bangs his head against the ceiling in frustration, or when he shouts with all his might, possibly uttering ancient lizard swears behind your back. He's got a hard head. But your characters will just get a splitting headache if they get their worlds rocked. Avoiding this one's self-explanatory. Just stay out of the way of the shadows appearing on the ground below. If you're getting especially bad luck, it might not be a bad idea to camp at the bottom of the screen to buy yourself more time to react. Fireball. With the power of inflamed flowers or some other sorcery, Flame Wing can turn up the heat with a few fireballs. I don't know, maybe he incinerated the Mushroom Kingdom before your adventure started. Fortunately, this one's quite easy to evade. He stands still and gives you plenty of time to move out of the way, either up or down. Left or right are no good thanks to the explosion, but once you know, knowing is half the battle. And last, but definitely not least, you didn't think I'd forget to mention your scent tempting those teeth to sink themselves into your bones, did you? Whenever the dragon moves its head without shifting the rest of its body with it, it's getting ready to take a nice bite out of you. This is easily his most dangerous attack, because it combos into anything else the dragon can do if he gets hungry after any other attack. Or worse, the chomps can be straight up unavoidable if you're playing alone. And it's easy to get tripped up by it at first because he'll randomly lunge at you faster to catch you off guard. You need to start moving up or down immediately the second you see that head move in case it ends up being the fast fight. However, if he's licking his lips stalling rather than wolfing you down, count your blessings. It'll be far easier to react to. The slow bite is avoided by jumping right when the bottom of his lips kisses your face. If you didn't skip anything in this video, congratulations! You are now armed with all the knowledge you need to dodge Draconic Disaster. Combine that with the might of your axe, and the only obstacle that separates you from your self-imposed glory will be however long it takes for you to recognize all five of the attacks whenever they're used. The only piece of advice I can give you now is, don't despair. Especially since every run will be different and your success can hinge on the dragon's appetite. The less he tries to bite you, the greater chance you have of victory. Remember what I said about the chomps being unavoidable sometimes? That can happen if he uses it immediately after you get knocked down by another attack. Or, in a more likely damageless scenario, Use it immediately after avoiding a slow bite when you're in the air and helpless to do anything about it. This fight was designed to take some quarters and tested just enough to ensure that it's doable without dying. As long as you remember not all damage is your fault, you will have the confidence you need to keep your cool under pressure. Continue persisting 
and you may yet walk out alive with a score as high as the sky. So you can boast you're really good at old video games that not many people care about today. But it's still a damn good game, so who cares? On the other hand, in the likely scenario you find yourself frustrated with repeated failures, you can use another strategy which you'll find amusing. When the dragon opens its mouth, leap into the flames as enthusiastically as possible so you can feed Flamewing a filling meal. You'd win because you're honoring a creature that's going to continue being timeless for centuries.